the Christian Apocrypha. The Christian Apocrypha is a large variety of biblical books that never made it into canon. Even though they were not part of the Bible, they prevailed and were circulated and were believed by many Christian denominations back in the biblical days. The Emperor Constantine, not only did he unite the Roman Empire, he proclaimed Christianity to be the official church of the whole empire during the Council of Nicaea, 325 AD. One thing the council did immediately was to strike out and eliminate 25 gospels of the then accepted Bible. The most important item the council ruled on was the essence of Jesus. 300 years after the time of Jesus, there was no consensus as to what really was. The debate was, was he a man, was he a god, or a combination of both? This was what was decided. I mean, that, that's why he apparently, if you read the history of Eusebius and others, uh, that's why the council was called, because Christians were disagreeing with each other about the nature of Christ, which tells you, you know, 300 years after the supposed birth of Christ, people still disagreed on who Christ was. There never was any agreement on who Christ was. Uh, uh, even in the New Testament, they, you, the author of Hebrews is still trying to argue where Jesus' place is in the hierarchy. Uh, if you read chapter 1 of Hebrews, uh, he seems to explain to his audience that Jesus is somewhere above angels and below God. You know? So if he had to explain that, it means it wasn't very clear. And that's where the Trinity got invented. That Jesus was part man and part God, but he was also part of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, which is Jesus, and then God the Holy Spirit, or we used to call it God the Holy Ghost. But once you've got uh, the Son as well as the Father, then you can open the door to the Trinity. I, I don't think before then the Trinity had been considered a person, but for some reason it, it got thrown into the deal too, and so you have Father, Son, and Spirit. Uh, but that's what enabled it to happen, this kind of, I think, sleight of hand trick uh, by which you can say, well, all right, they're two different persons, but they share a common nature. Uh, and now that uh, doesn't really work, in my humble opinion. This was one of the cutest contrivances ever bestowed on mankind. I mean, when I was in the first grade, one plus one plus one equal three. For Christianity, one plus one plus one equals one. They refined the doctrine of the Trinity. Um, how can you be both God and man and still end up as one third of God? That's complicated. This was invented in order to preserve the whole notion of monotheism, one God. So how can you have God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit and have one God? Well, they just change the definition of words and ran with it. And that's what's believed today. People believe this. It is interesting that in the 1500s, when Martin Luther proclaimed his objections to the church and separated, he began the Protestant movement, which claimed to only believe scripture. Yet they adopted the Trinity, which was conceived by the council and is not supported by scripture. And yet, again, there's... The Trinity is a pillar of Protestant beliefs, but there's nothing in Scripture to allow for that. Christianity was never really successful by just arguing. In fact, if you read Acts, you constantly see them frustrated that they're not convincing people. Uh, even Paul says, okay, the Jews aren't listening to me, now I'm going to go to the Gentiles. A number of occasions like that. So clearly he was not persuading uh, as many people as he thought. With Constantine, however, you have a new persuasion, which is the use of imperial force to unify and enforce belief. And then that tradition uh, is, is the one that sort of dominates through the medieval church. Uh, Protestantism sort of uh, fragmented it a bit. Uh, and you had a bunch of religious wars as a result, the Thirty Years' War. Uh, and then the effort of the Counter-Reformation. So really when you get down to it, you know, how many people have been converted by sheer uh, logic of argument or by sheer... It's usually most of Christian numbers come either because of an initial forceful action of, of forced conversion and then the, the reproduction of those 
people off the parents who then grow. Uh, but it's not really, uh, missionary activity is not as successful as people think, even today.